morning, Wisdom family and friends. I'm Renard Mattox and welcome to Virtual Church. We're so glad you chose to join us for our virtual worship experience. Is this your first time watching us online? If so, tell us where you're watching from in the comments. Like and share this experience with your family and friends. Now, let's check out what's happening at Wisdom. The youth ministry asks that all parents of kids ages zero to five years old to attend an Ignite Parent Support Meeting on January 21st, immediately after service. Family Volunteer Promise Training. This will be held at 6 p.m. on January 8th. The location is 2097 Highway 41 South in Perry. Questions? Email familypromise at mywisdom.com. Join Next Up for S'mores, Conversation, and a Movie on February 2nd during a fireside chat from 6 to 9 p.m. If you're between the ages of 18 to 35, you should come. Oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm past 35. Oh, okay, it's not for me. Okay, anyway, you should come to this. It's a free event. Please RSVP at mywisdom.com forward slash next up. As a bonus, everyone will receive a 2024 goal planning kit. That sounds cool. As we close out the year, let's make an effort to start each day with prayer. Join us Wednesdays at 6 a.m. on the prayer line. Wisdom, are you excited about 2024? We are too, and we can't wait to see you tonight at 10 p.m. as we bling in the new year. Have you decided to take the next step to join our Wisdom family? We'd love to have you. If you're ready, contact the church office to sign up for our new partners class, which will be held on January 6th at 1015 a.m. That's it for this week. Make sure you download our church app and follow us on social media. Have a blessed week. And remember, C3 Living, caring, community, and connection is the wisdom way. You no longer is just living as a conqueror, but you're living as a poor man, a conqueror. You're not just living the life, but you're living the abundant life. You're not just living off of what's in your cup, but you're living off of what's in your saucer. Because God didn't intend for you to live off of what's in your cup. He designed for you to live off of what's on your saucer. What's overflowing off of your life, off of your saucer? Look at your life and say, I'm living for overflow because my saucer. From my name being passed to the right person, to the right people, to the right network, to the right source. Tell somebody around you, I'm a few days away. I ain't talking to everybody. I just came from Georgia to talk to somebody that says I'm getting ready to turn some things upside down. If you knew what I've been through, if you knew my struggle, you will understand why I'm screaming like a Healer, y'all quiet. He still am a way maker. He, he still am a deliverer. He still am a heart fixer. He still am a mind regulator. He still am an addiction breaker. He still am a heavy load sharer. He still am my midnight rider. He still am my walking cane. He still am a bridge over troubled water. Tell somebody one more time everything he was, he still am. Well, praise the Lord, Wisdom family. It's a great morning to be where you are, giving God the praise. I don't know if you're home, at work, driving, wherever you are. Would you just open your mouth and thank the Lord for allowing you to see the last Sunday, the last day of 2023. Come on, somebody give him some praise. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for keeping me. Thank you, Lord, for leading me. For guiding me, for directing my path all this year. Would you do me a favor? Would you make one final sound for the king? A sound that says, Lord, I love you. A sound that says, God, I bless your name. A sound that says, you're worthy. A sound that says, come what may. I still, I still, I still got to praise on the inside. A sound that says, though he slay me, hey, hey, yet will, yet will I trust him. I don't know about you, but
but I'm still trusting. I'm still leaning. I'm still depending. I'm still walking with him. I'm still talking to him. I'm still, still, still holding on to the Lord. If that's you, somebody say, yeah. Put your hands together and give him glory. I don't know how I made it here, but one thing I do know, the reason that I'm standing, the reason that I'm still praising, the reason that I still have a sound is it's the grace of God. Would you type that in the chat? Say, thank God for his grace. Come on, put it in there. Thank God for his grace. But by the grace of God, that is why we're here. So we've come to give him praise this morning. We've come to lift up his name. Come on, clap your hands like this. Repeat after me. Listen. Say, I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. No one was by the grace of God. I know it was by the grace That's of your part. God. Say, I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. No one was by the grace of God. I know it was by the Let's grace of God. Let's do that again. Say, I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how hey. I made it here. I know it's by the grace of God. I know it's by the grace Tell of God. Tell somebody, I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. But I know it's by the grace of God. Come on, somebody say, I made it. I made it by the grace of God. And I am still here. I'm here by the grace of God. Oh, I made it. I made it by the grace, by the grace. Of God. I know it's by the grace of God. Say, I don't know how I made it here. I don't know how I made it here. I know it's by the grace of God. I know it's by the Say, grace oh, of God. I made it. I made hey. it by the grace of God. And I am still here. I'm here hey. by the grace of God. Somebody, anybody made I it. I made it by the grace of God. And I am still here. Say, I made it. I made it by the grace of God. 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 I made it
that you have done for all that you have done God we thank you for your faithfulness God great is your faithfulness towards us God morning by morning new mercies we see all we have needed your hand has provided and God we thank you we thank you Lord we know we can't thank you enough but we still want to offer up a praise we want to offer up our worship unto you and we just want to tell you thank you God we just want to tell you how much we appreciate you we know that we couldn't make it through this year without you God you have been our rock and we bless you Lord we bless you Lord be glorified in this place. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified.
Praise the Lord, everybody, and God bless you on this Sunday morning. So glad that you can be with us. Thank you for wherever you may be watching on this morning. Do me a favor, put it in the chat right now where you're streaming from, where you're viewing. It gives us a record of your visit, but it also lets us know how far the stream is going on this morning. Praise God for you and Merry Christmas to each and every one of you and Happy New Year as we are in the holiday season. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord on this morning. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, book of Matthew, chapter number two. Now I'll be reading from 
the Good News Translation of the Bible. Please read along in the version of your choosing. That's Matthew chapter number two. And we'll begin our reading at verse number seven. Matthew chapter number two, beginning at verse number seven. One more time, Matthew chapter number two, beginning at verse number seven from the Good News Translation of the Bible. It reads like this. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions. Go and make a careful search for the child. And when you find him, let me know so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left and on their way, they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And they went inside the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and presented them to him. Verse number 12. Then they returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Amen for the reading of God's word. I want to preach for the next few moments that the Spirit shall God with this thought in our minds, a response to God's love. A response to God's love. Again, here it is. We're in the Advent season as we approach this conclusion of the Advent season, we want to take a look at this morning God's love that he brings to all of us through the birth of Jesus Christ. The love that God has for each and every one of us as God sends God's son to us to redeem humanity as he comes through the lowliness of life born in the manger, having to be birthed because there was no room in the inn, him and his family being pushed to the side and the friends is wherever they could lay their heads at the time. We thank God for God's love in sending Jesus to us. Imagine this. In the tranquility of a mountain road, a man once paused to appreciate the breathtaking landscape. As he stood, fascinated by nature's majesty, a subtle shift began to happen. As he was looking around, he noticed that there were rocks nestled securely. However, one of them began to fall. In the quiet disruption cascading, found that there was a forthcoming avalanche as one rock began to fall after the other. With immediate discernment, the man escaped the looming disaster, realizing the danger of even the slightest compromise. Simply put, he had to get away before he was overtaken. Likewise, in our lives, we have been perched between the tensions of loyalties where diplomatic compliance opposes moral responsibility. Today, I really just want to remind us of the truths that echo through the generations that, that, that when we read the text, they have wise men, these, these mysterious figures, these magi who come from the East, and they journey bearing gifts, guided not by only celestial wonders, but by the call that transcends human command that their travel went through the political landscapes and societal expectations, facing the choice between allegiance to a ruler's decree, safeguarding the divine. Here it is, my brothers and sisters, within our text lies a narrative full of wisdom. It speaks to the generations. It speaks across eras. It speaks across cultures. And it speaks across contexts. In many ways, it causes us into introspection, urging us to discern the subtle tremors that threaten the core of our moral convictions. For in the medley of ethical decisions, the small shifts may seem harmless, yet they carry a potential for catastrophic consequences. 
And so as we sink into the depths of Matthew chapter number two, and we look at verses, as we look through verses one through 12, uh, let us unravel the strands that weave together the obedience, integrity, and the audacity of faithful actions in the face of societal norms. Yeah, it's the dance between worldly expectations and the divine call. And so here it is. Here's the context of our text on today that 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 we have this significant story that comes through and we are introduced to these wise men. Yeah, here it is. They come journeying from the east and it's important to look at the nuances prevalent in the era who that 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 Matthew's gospel captures. It's the political scene that was dominated by Herod the Great at the time and he is the ruler whose power reverberates across all of the land. Yeah, he's known for his his cunning governance and occasional brutality wielding authority over Judea under the watchful eye of the Roman Empire. His decrees were not to be trifled with. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 it sets the stage then for society navigating beneath the shadows of royal commands. Yeah, that if Herod says it, that is the law. And here comes the text says that these wise men get here. They envoy from the East, not merely astronomers, but revered figures in their own right. They are wise men, right? They, 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 they come with a, with a prestige of their own in their cultural narrative. And so their journey is ignited by the celestial phenomenon, spoke volumes of the divine orchestration threading through human history, that as they come, they're being led by the light the star that they see in the East. Yeah. These wise men were men of learning. They were revered for their wisdom and for their insight. And their arrival in Jerusalem bore the weight of significance, not just for the gifts that they carried, but for the seismic implications of their quest. However, their purpose clashed between the expectations of the reigning powers. And so uh, as, as we read the text, we will see that these wise men would, be, would end up defying the decree of Herod. And uh, that was to divulge the whereabouts of the newborn king, Jesus, who had been, been born to be king of the Jews. And, and they charted a course guided by a higher authority. Yeah, that they were guided by, 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 by the implications of star that was given by the Lord instead of being guided by the rules and regulations and the laws that, and the edicts that were given by King Herod. Yeah, that they were guided by a higher authority protecting the baby Jesus from the hands of a ruler whose intentions were hidden in deceitfulness. And so beneath the surface of this narrative, the divine elements begin to gleam to each and every one of us on this morning that the protection encompassing Jesus during the political turbulence and the divine guidance leading the wise men like a cosmic compass depicts a story connected with the providence of God rising above the earthly realms. In this context, it invites us to go beyond the mere recounting of events, urging us to grasp the gravity of social power dynamics and the resolute divine protection surrounding those who respond to honoring the call of Christ. And so as we look at the text on this morning, there are three things that, that emerge, the three things that come about as we read from these wise men's daring choice to defy a king's order. If you leave me a next couple of minutes, we'll get on up out of here. Number one, I want you to know that we learn that the priority of the divine call should always be over human commands. The priority of divine call should be over human commands. That at the heart of the wise man's journey lies the pivotal lesson, the compelling significance of divine calling offers often differs from the cadence of societal expectations. Yeah, just because someone said it's law does not mean that it's ethical and moral for me to follow. 
Yeah, this conflict uh, presents a dilemma where allegiance to the divine signal one, signals one away far from the familiar landscape of human commands. That throughout history, this ethical dilemma has echoed, resonating with the depths uh, of Acts chapter number 5 and verse number 29, where the apostles proclaimed that we must obey God rather than men. It's the declaration that reverberates through the ages, summoning souls to recognize the supremacy of God's directives above earthly mandates. Yeah, it was that great Bishop of Hippo, Augustine, that captures this, prim uh, this principle succinctly when he says divine commands supersede human demands. I'll say it again, just in case you dozed off for a little bit. Divine commands supersede human demands. It's a truth that's etched into the very fabric of faith, that it's a compass that steers believers through the tumultuous waters of conflicting allegiances that these wise men established within their social reputation. They are who they are. People know them. They have been sent on this journey. They are respected men. They face a crossroads where obedience to Herod clashed with their commission to pay homage to the newborn king. And then their choice to shield Jesus from Herod's malicious intentions, they unveiled a paradigm that the sovereignty of the divine calling supersedes the authority of human commands. That this principle in itself, uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with the pilgrim souls seeking uh, to navigate the entanglement of ethical decisions, it, 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 it lets us know that they had purpose into what it is that they were doing and it wasn't going to be stopped or thwarted by anybody. I, I want you to know that when we read the text, it invites the believers to revere the sign, the whisper, the presence uh, uh, of God's calling, even if it leads them down unconventional paths, straying from the norms of the world. Here it is, Romans chapter number 12, verse number two, it tells us that we should not be conformed to the standards of this world but but we ought to be letting God transform us inwardly by the complete changing by the renewing of our minds and then you will be able to know the will of God what is good and what is pleasing and what is perfect unto God this means for us my brothers and sisters discerning and pondering the weight of God's directives in our lives we should be able to acknowledge that in the tumultuous tensions between the societal expectations and the cause of God that the latter should always be the compass of our actions. Yeah, that, that, that who are we going to believe? Who are we going to follow? Choose you this day who you will serve. Yeah, yeah. That's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord because the priority of God's call should always supersede human commands but not only that uh uh number two integrity before god must be uh, um must not be compromised by misplaced loyalties i'll say it again that integrity before god must not be compromised by misplaced loyalties integrity in itself is the core of character and emerges not in moments of ease but in the trial of conflicting allegiances yeah, that the tale of these wise men, it, it, it paints a vivid picture of navigating the delicate balance between unwavering loyalty and unyielding integrity. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're understanding because Proverbs 3, 3 through 4 appeals to the believer to let love and faithfulness be the permanent inscription upon their hearts. That it summons us uh, to combine loyalty with the fabric of integrity that these men held fast to their convictions while honoring their cultural reverence for the wisdom and seeking the one who was born king. This act highlights their loyalty to pay homage to Jesus despite the dangers it even posed. And so here it is that trying to cage the future in an expired presence leaves the soul's wings clipped by fear that 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 you have to be able to say, I don't care what it is right now. I understand what was to come. And here it is. Jesus is here. The one that was born king. And just because you scared that somebody else has come along, I need you to know it's not going to change my mind on my purpose and intent to see the child. That's what these 
wise men say, and here it is, that even if they had known nothing of Herod's character, few kings would have been ready to surrender their own rule to one whom some foreigners had held king, that you come into my town, you come into my city, saying you come to see some child who was born not to be king but was already king and while i'm still standing here you can see how it is that can be a little disrespectful to the king but however it is they 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 come and they say i'm not scared of anything i won't be scared i won't be thwarted in what it is that i know and i'm going to go with intent purpose to go worship the child yeah and so these wise men, they had a commitment to safeguarding Jesus despite the societal and perhaps the political repercussions that uh, exemplify the delicate dissension between loyalty and integrity. And so it's the lesson for us to be careful of the alliances we foster and the moral compass that steers our decisions. Got to be careful with who you link up with. Yeah, got to be careful with who you networking with. Because not everybody who says they want to worship means that they're going to worship. Yeah. Not everybody that says they're going to sacrifice doesn't mean they're offering of themselves. Need you to understand that, that that's a real good lesson for us on today. To be careful of our allegiances and our alliances for us. This is the caution to, uh, of the nuances that shade the ethical decisions of our lives. That when we have to make the decisions of who it is that we're going to serve, are we going to cave in to the societal norms that, that go against the ethical and moral fabric that God calls us to into righteousness in into holiness, into purity. No, no, no. Or are we going to, to fall prey just because everybody else is doing it because, because someone has told us to go against what God has set as the standard for our lives, that it pleads for us not merely to pledge our allegiance to the ideals or authority, but to anchor our loyalty based on integrity, where faithfulness to God precedes all other alliances and where our loyalties are fastened to the unfaltering principles of righteousness. I'm coming to tell y'all that there have to be some integrity in our lives when it comes to serving our God, when it comes to worshiping our God, when coming to be into the presence of our God. And so here it is that, that, that we find out through these wise men and their journey that the priority of God's call should always supersede human commands. That integrity before God must not be compromised by misplaced loyalties. But finally, my brothers and sisters, faithfulness demands leaving comfort for God's lead. Yeah, that's it. Faithfulness demands leaving comfort for God's lead. Yeah. Here it is. Faithfulness is a journey marked by courageous steps beyond the confines of comfort. I'll say it one more time. Faithfulness is a journey marked by courageous steps beyond the confines of comfort that it beckons us to leave the sheltered havens of security. And so the story that these wise men present to us today, it personifies the courage demanded when faith calls. They're urging the departure from the familiar shores towards uncharted territories. Here it is. Hebrews 11 and 6 proclaims that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And it's an anthem that reverberates across ages because it summons the believer to embrace the discomfort of uncertainty when God's calling unfails. And so these wise men persevered in, in their learned ways, in their learned wisdom, and, and, as they have this esteemed uh, position, this, this task to go celebrate and worship the newborn king. They embark on a journey burdened with risk. Yeah, burdened with risk. They ventured far beyond the known world, charting a course that led them to a humbling dwelling where a child laid. And someone once said that great things are done by a progression of small things being brought together, that these men, that their departure from the customary to the extraordinary wasn't a sudden leap, but a series of fateful steps from their homeland to Herod's presence, all the way to finding the child there, all 
just to leave and not go back and give the report. Yeah. That's what ends up happening in this story. Yeah. They converged on a journey that etched their names into the an- into the annals of, of, of sacred history as they carried these gifts, as they had joy in their hearts, as they made their way to their destination. And the text lays out that there was an obligation to relinquish the allure of, 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 of comfort when God's calling went forth. And so we are called to do the same. We are called to shatter the shackles of complacency, stepping into the unknown in pursuit of God's calling. And here it is. And faithfulness demands our departure from the zones of ease and security, thrusting us towards the territory where God's presence is found and God's will unfolds. That's all I'm really trying to tell somebody that if you're going to to, to learn anything from these wise men on today and and respond to God's love, you're going to have to be faithful. Yeah, to get out of your comfort zone, you're going to have to take some risk to go into some places that are uncharted and some places that are unknown. Get outside of the norms, get outside of the place where there's been offered ease into your life to where you can get into the presence of God and watch God's will unfold. Yes, indeed. And so here it is. It's the priority of God's call superseding human commands, It's the integrity before God that must not be compromised by misplaced loyalty. And it's the faithfulness that demands leaving comfort for God's lead. All I'm really trying to tell you that this is not just any old story. No, no, no. When you read in your devotional time, Matthew, Matthew chapter number two, it is not just a story about some some foreigner's journey. No, 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 sir, no, ma'am. This is a roadmap for us, too, because there's a journey that we all must take here and right now. I need you to think about it, my brothers and sisters. How many times have we felt the pull telling us to choose God over what the world expects for us? That wise men knew that struggle too well. When you read, they understood the trouble and the pull. And the, and, 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 the, and the influence that a king would have on them, but they faced the choice to follow Herod's decree or to safeguard the anointed one. And they chose God, that they chose integrity over the status quo. And they, that's, that's, that's just not about them, but that's for us as well, that as, as we go about our daily lives, it's about the moments when we got to stand firm in our faith, even if it means leaving behind the comfort zones we've always known that faith ain't always cozy. No, sir. No, ma'am. It's about stepping into the unknown, trusting that God's got us covered, that I, that God will still lead us and guide us along the way, that if he will lead us, we will not stray. Yes, indeed, that we need to take the moment to think about our own path, that where is it that we are feeling God's call fi- uh, on us, pulling and, and, and tugging on us? Where is it that we see God operating in our lives? Maybe God is pulling on us to speak up when everybody else is quiet. Maybe it's the urging for us to walk away from some things that go against your core belief and the standards that God has called for each and every one of us. You see the signs. It says, follow me just as that star they saw in the east. That's God signaling signaling, the, uh, signaling to you and us, to you and me. So let's behold the living out of our faith and following the call of God, that we're all being signaled to go against the world's demands and to follow the calling of God, that there's something God wants us to see. There's something that God wants us to to, to experience, but most of all, there's someone God wants us to worship. And we have to hold on to our integrity and let our loyalty be the one, uh, be to the one who is born king. Yeah, we need to revel in the fervent desire to offer a life of integrity as homage to the Lord that remember how the Lord willingly descended from his heavenly throne to be cradled in a humble manger. Behold the depths of God's love and God's faithfulness uh, of God's promises towards God's people. Now, how do we reciprocate, reciprocate God's love for us? 
We do it by pursuing integrity as a form of our worship to our magnificent Savior that when our lives exude moral rectitude, truthfulness, and reliability, we mirror the very character of Christ. And it's our integrity that, that, that not only glorifies the character of our Lord, but it also serves as a testament to the world of God's life-changing grace. That as this season commemorates God's love and the miracle of the incarnation of Jesus the Christ, let our response be by dedicating our lives entirely to the express verbal intent to worship our God, to worship our God in spirit and truth, to recognize and, and experience the presence of God and what it is that we have to offer. Maybe you don't have no myrrh to offer. Maybe you don't have any gold to offer. Maybe you don't have any, any, any frankincense to offer, but here it is. God, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know that if you withdraw thyself from me, whether shall I go? My worship is what I have to offer. My worship is what you have to offer. You may not have everything that everybody else has. Maybe you don't have the riches, the silver and the gold to offer, but here it is I have a surrendered life and by because of what you've done for me God I'll respond to your love by having your my life in your hands it's it's, it's our response to God's love to live with an integrity submitting ourselves with the intent purpose of worshiping the one who has come to give us life the one that came to give us life more abundant. To surrender ourselves to say, no matter what stature I may be of, no matter how far or near I may come, here I am, I lay myself down to you as a sign of a worship, acknowledging you have come to make it all better. Acknowledging that you have come to save sinner man that you have come to atone for the sin of the world and so how do you respond to God's love I respond in worship and I do it with an integrity that leads to the single purpose that I'm going to worship in spirit and in truth Hallelujah. God bless you. What a powerful service. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual worship experience. It was amazing and I pray that it impacts your life just as much as it did mine. The word is always so rich here and there is always a word in season. If you did not have an opportunity to connect with us through giving, I will give you an opportunity now to do so on your screen is information on ways you can sow into this ministry and the word you just received. We certainly appreciate your partnership here at Word in Season. We will see you Wednesday night for Bible study and you can join us in the sanctuary next Sunday for our in-person worship. Follow us on any of our social media platforms Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok to find out more about what's going on here at Word in Season. Remember, for every season, there is a Word in Season. And don't forget, C3 Living, caring, community, and connection is the wisdom way. God bless you.